Hey folks, I'm back with round six from the 2021 North American Open. Um, so in this round, I was paired against Gunnar Anderson, who's uh, quite a strong player, like 2200 FIDE and uh, well over 2300 USCF. And yeah, this was uh, an another very, very tough game. Uh, my opponent actually surprised me with the Grunfeld in the opening. I was expecting uh, King's Indian because it seems like every one of my games these days ends up being a King's Indian one way or the other. But instead, uh, he hit me with D5, which, yeah, I wasn't expecting... And I took a little bit of time to choose which variation to play here, but I end up going for Queen A4 check, um, which is definitely not the most dangerous uh, continuation from white, but it's a little bit offbeat and it takes the game, I think, into um, kind of pretty typical Grunfeld territory, where maybe things aren't as theoretical, but um, both players are kind of left to their own devices. Uh, that said, I really wasn't sure what I was doing just a couple moves later after Knight D7, Knight F3, castles bishop e2 this is uh, pretty much standard and here black has like a, a bunch of options like e5 c5 um, and the move that my opponent played in the game which is knight b6 now i think this is a relatively new idea because there's not a ton of games in the database um, with this move but some uh, high level games and some recent games and uh, yeah here i'm already kind of was thinking on my own i ended up playing queen a3 which Looks funny, but it is kind of a thematic square for the queen uh, in this position. The idea is to cover uh, the c5 square and not to let black play c5 um, super easily. Like if I were to just play queen c2 here, then I think black goes c5 and gets um, some really nice and, and typical counterplay. Uh, so queen a3, after the game I found out there's other moves here as well, like queen b4 and queen a5. But basically all these moves have the idea of stopping uh, black from playing c5. And now black played bishop g4. Um, which looked normal to me during the game. And I was thinking for a bit here, I ended up going bishop g5, but I don't think this is really the most accurate move. If I could do it again, I would probably just castle here. I wanted to throw in bishop g5 just to attack the seven pawn, but the truth is, is that this pawn isn't really hanging. Um, and black can actually go queen d7 here. And if I take on e7, either with the queen or with the bishop, uh, eventually there's going to be rook e8 and picking up the e4 pawn. So I'm not, I'm not actually even threatening to take the pawn, and it's not clear that the bishop wants to be uh, on g5 in this position. Um, so, yeah, instead I think I should have castled. And uh, the point here is that if queen d6, for example, which um, happens in the game, uh, I can play queen to b3 and sidestep this one. And now my bishop actually wants to go to a3. And it's really hard for black to get their break with c5 because of bishop a3. So this wouldn't really be working for black, and black would have to try something else. And I think maybe white can actually fight for um, a small advantage here. Bishop g4 from black might not be the most accurate move. Queen d6 uh, immediately is also possible. I think this was the theory, as far as I remember, um, checking after the game. And something like castles bishop e6, and uh, black is doing all right. Um, so we get bishop g4, bishop g5. Black ends up playing rook e8, which kind of justifies my move bishop to g5. But again, I think queen d7 was, uh, was stronger. And uh, now I castle. Um, the engine actually suggests h3 here with the idea to force black to take on f3 uh, and then take with the g-pawn, which Stockfish loves doing in these kinds of positions. <laughs> I've seen it so many times where uh, the engine wants to take with the g-pawn to keep the bishop on e2 covering the c4 square. And uh, the engine claims that white is a little bit better here, the key line being that in case of queen d6, white can actually trade queens and uh, play this very strong move a4. And white should be better in this end game because of the two bishops, nice center, and we have this plan of like a5, rook b1, and um, yeah, black has a lot of weaknesses in the position. So this might have been uh, more accurate, but I end up castling, which, uh, well, seemed natural to me. But now queen to d6, and yeah, here I started burning a lot of time because I realized, well, c5 is coming, and this end game I didn't think was so special for white um, because. Well, I haven't won the, the bishop pair yet, and black still has rook c8 and ideas against the c3 pawn. So I think black here is doing uh, much better than in the previous variation. Um, and so given that the end game wasn't good, I was trying to figure out where to put my queen. I ended up playing queen c1 just to um, keep an eye on the bishop and prepare a move like bishop f4, which I thought might be useful. But I also considered uh, stuff like queen to b3 here. My issue was that black just plays c5 in every position, and it's actually really hard to hold on to the center because black wants to take on f3, and then the d4 pawn is actually hanging. And if I play d5, kind of a thematic move, uh, black will typically respond e6. And it's really hard for white to actually hold the structure because I can't play c4 yet. My rook is on a1 and hanging, and I don't think it's a good sacrifice um, in, uh, in this position. Um, and otherwise, yeah, my structure is just kind of uh, collapsing. 
So that was the problem for me. So I started spending a lot of time. I ended up going queen c1 and uh, black plays c5. And yeah, here I considered the move bishop to b5 for a long time, um, but ultimately I couldn't make it work. Now black can throw in bishop takes f3 um, if they want to, but uh, my issue here, so my idea with bishop b5, of course, I'm attacking the rook, but I'm also set, sending up bishop f4 with a nice little um, crisscross attack against the queen. But eventually I had issues solving this line. I thought maybe black goes rook ec8, uh, lining up against my own queen and making the threat of c takes d4 much more powerful. And then after bishop f4, just queen d8. And it looks like black uh, is backing up, but um, still c takes d4 is a huge threat. Bishop takes f3 is an annoying move here. And uh, yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure if white is even equalizing here. Um, for example, one line I considered was d5, and then let's say take, take. And then this move c4 really bothered me. Otherwise, I, I think white would be doing kind of okay, because I have the space, I have the two bishops. But after c4, the issue is that black can... Uh, push a6 here, and my bishop is trapped. And I was actually calculating this position for a while, and I couldn't really see a way out. Um, it looked like white was going to be worse in every line. Like, I can go a4 and a5, for example, to attack the knight, but then black takes, I take here, and uh, black can take on b6 with the queen, and this position is just really bad for white. The c3 pawn um, is always going to be weak. And uh, I was thinking if I try, like, queen c2 here, and then bishop a4, then black just takes on a4, and then again, I lose the um, the C pawn, and uh, I think White's just just busted. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't figure out uh, a way here to to continue the game. Uh, the engine actually shows an amazing resource that holds for White. So at best, this would have been equal. Um, so it's good that I didn't go for this, uh, which is the move Rook to B1 with idea to meet A6 with this just fantastic move Bishop E8, <laughs> which I can tell you guys I did not consider this idea even for a second. And it's just one of those computer moves that like, okay, apparently it works in this exact position, but normally this kind of thing would, would never work. The point is, of course, the bishop is untouchable, or if black takes, then white will take on b6. Uh, and otherwise I want to follow up with like queen e3, and the knight doesn't really have any squares. So by, by some magic, white ends up surviving this position. Um, and uh, Apparently it's like equal with best play. But it just kind of shows the danger and the issues I was having during the game. Um, because, of course, once you see c4 and that the bishop is getting trapped, you know, you definitely don't want to go for this variation. So after a, a long thing, I end up not playing bishop b5. And instead, I start with bishop f4. And uh, now is my opponent's turn to tank because um, the queen is under attack. And the obvious move is queen to d7. But the problem with this one was that I can go rook to b1. And I'm introducing a threat of bishop to b5. And so this, okay, threat is to win the exchange. Black doesn't have a6. And uh, if black makes a move to defend, like let's say like rook to d8, for example, um, well, then I got my rook off of a1. So for example, I can play d5. And then on e6, I can meet that with c4. And white gets a nice structure. I think in this exact position, dc5 is also quite good because black doesn't really have a great move in view of bishop to b5. So this rook b1 move, I, I, I think, was causing my opponent some issues. Um, and he ends up going queen d8, which is uh, very logical. Not the most natural move, right? Just putting the queen back on d8. But it, it does make sense because he's stepping out of the way of rook b1 and bishop b5 ideas um, because now he's just going to be in time to take on f3 and uh, take on d4. So I spent more time here because, again, it's kind of a, a difficult situation. I wasn't sure what to do. Um, if dc, then knight a4 uh, looks to be problematic. And um, I was also considering bishop to b5 here, but then I couldn't really figure out this line after even just like rook f8, or let's say black takes first, and then goes rook f8. I was thinking dc5, and actually everything looks great, and white would be doing really well here. The threat is um, rook d1 along with taking the knight. Um, but here, black saves with a6, another nice counterattack. Uh, so I was happy I, I saw this one during the game. And uh, yeah, white has no way to get an advantage. I think black is fine. Once the bishop moves, then black gets knight a4, and the structure is really weak in white's position. Um, so after queen d8, I end up going with rook to d1. And I had this move kind of in the back of my mind. Um, I was thinking about playing it last turn as well. Um, but I decide to do it here now that I got bishop f4, queen d8, and and this move um, seemingly hangs the d4 pawn, but it's really not so easy for black. Now black ends up taking on d4, takes on f3, and uh, he grabs this pawn uh, because he, well, he didn't see how white is going to uh, to punish him here. 
It's also possible just to play rook c8, because after bishop takes d4, black does end up in some trouble here. And this move might have been probably the easiest way for, for black to equalize in this game. Um, because my queen doesn't really have a great square, and then black has ideas of playing like knight c4, or possibly like knight a4 if I put my queen on b2. And okay, at some point black is going to be able to take this pawn as well. Um, so okay, it's still very very playable position, but um, yeah, the engine was, was saying that black is definitely um, equalizing after this move. But he ends up taking on d4, which, you know, I can't blame him because I think he was expecting uh, bishop e5 here. And um, yeah, actually, he, he mentioned this after the game. This is mainly what he was looking at. And here, okay, black can give the queen, right? Bishop takes e5, rook takes d8, rook takes d8. And uh, during the game, I felt like this would be really, really tough to win. Um, just seemed like all of black's pieces are well placed. And yeah, I have very few weaknesses to, uh, to target here. Maybe white is a little bit better, but I didn't really evaluate my winning chances so highly here. Um, instead, my idea was to go e5, which uh, turns out to be a very annoying move for black because the bishop is just cut off and now it's pinned and it's very difficult for black to hold on to this piece. Um, it, had I played like bishop e3 on the previous move, then of course black goes e5 and uh, solidifies and everything is fine. Um, but white playing e5 is actually very unpleasant. And I remember seeing this idea in some like, I think it was Svidler who was talk, uh, showing this move maybe in like some course or something. Um, it wasn't this, ex it was a different position, but it came out of the Grunfeld. I wouldn't be able to recreate it, but um, it was essentially the same idea. Like black snags this pawn on d4, wants to go e5, and white instead plays e5, not just shutting down black's bishop, but also opening up the light square bishop. You know, I can just win my pawn back on b7, for example. And uh, yeah, black is just in a, a ton of trouble here because now the bishop is pinned. I want to go uh, bishop e3, for example, at some point and, uh, and just win it. Um, now, right away, bishop e3 wouldn't work because black can take. Um, but in the game, black inserted rook c8. I play queen b1 and there bishop e3 was now a very serious threat. But the real issue is just that it's very difficult for black to untangle here. So white doesn't even have to be particularly quick. But yeah, my idea is just to go like queen b1, queen b4 and uh, go after the bishop, for example. Or I need to be careful, right? Because the point is if black takes on a1, black is not getting enough material. I take on d8, and then I win the bishop on a1. So I do need to make sure that I'm always able to take back. But yeah, essentially this bishop on d4 is not going anywhere, and black has a very hard time uh, rescuing it. So black played rook c8, and uh, I played queen b1, uh, which I thought was the best move, just to keep an eye on the rook and keep uh, the pin alive. And yeah, now my threat is bishop e3. Now during the game, I actually thought black is just kind of busted here. Like I just didn't see a defense. And uh, yeah, I end up winning um, pretty quickly. As it turns out, black actually does have one saving move here. Uh, if you guys want to treat this as a very difficult <laughs> calculation exercise, you can pause the video here and, and try to figure out um, the one move that actually equalizes here for black. But it's really tough. I can tell you, I didn't consider it during the game. And then after the game, when I was discussing with my opponent, neither of us brought up, brought up this move. So it was just not on any of our uh, radar. Um, so like I mentioned, the threat is bishop e3. One move I was strongly considering was rook c4. And um, here I can't go bishop e2 immediately to attack the rook because there's bishop takes f2 check. And I actually calculated a funny line here. If king takes f2, um, rook takes f4 check, king e3. I thought it's interesting, like uh, the queen is still under attack and I want to just take the rook and I'll be a rook up. But black has knight d5 check, unfortunately defending the rook. I have to take on d5, take on f4, and I'm a piece up, but <laughs> black has just so many pawns here and my king on f4 is absolutely ridiculous. So I think only black can be better here and probably black is just, just winning in a practical sense. So that wasn't working, but uh, of course I can just start with bishop e3. The bishop is still pinned and not going anywhere. And because I'm attacking it twice, black can't move the queen off of the d-file, and my next move is just bishop e2, uh, rook a4, bishop b5, for example, and uh, yeah, uh, black is just uh, losing too much material. So uh, this one wasn't working, and uh, in the game, black plays knight a4, um, which ends up losing to, to queen b4 uh, with a nice double attack. Um, the saving move, the only move in the position, was uh, knight c4 which just didn't really cross my mind um, because it doesn't seem to deal <laughs> with, with the issues at all of black's bishop on d4 being pinned. But it, it's an incredibly strong move. Of course, it's very concrete, and the engine sees these kinds of things uh, immediately. But for humans, it's it, tough to see this move because it just the idea is not really clear. 
But black wants to play queen to b6, so that's kind of how uh, black is trying to untangle here. Um, and also black at some point is going to threaten knight to b2 just to harass white's, uh, white's rook. So that's kind of the, the key idea that black needs to see, which I think is really tough. Um, so uh, if I go like queen takes b7, for example, then queen b6, black gets out and I think is at least okay. Um, if I try bishop takes b7, though, for example, then it's really not easy for black because like rook b8, the natural move runs into e6 and black is again uh, in huge trouble. So here black would have to find knight to b2 counterattacking white's rook, then after rook d2, knight to c4. So this is like typical engine stuff. It's really, really hard to find this um, for, for humans just because the moves, they feel very random. But uh, yeah, just goes to show the difficulty of black's position. So technically taking on d4 maybe objectively was still holdable, but of course it lands black into a, a position where they have to find a series of only moves. Um, so after e5, uh, rook c8, knight a4, queen b4, this was essentially game over. Black did have one last trick here after bishop takes a1. Um, if I play rook takes d8, taking the queen, rook takes d8, queen takes a4, uh, I have a queen and bishop versus two rooks, so winning material advantage. Uh, definitely reminded me of my round uh, uh, three game, I think it was against uh, Guillermo Vasquez, where I had the, uh, the opposite side <laughs> of this material imbalance. But here black has rook d4 at the end, and wins back a piece with the bishop on f4 hanging. So this actually wouldn't work for white. Black gets two rooks for the queen and is absolutely fine. So rather than uh, taking the queen, I take on a4. And now I'm in exchange down, but the bishop is still under attack, and uh, as is the queen. And so black is losing another piece here, and then I'm going to get at least uh, two bishops for the rook. And uh, yeah, generally that's a very nice... Uh, material imbalance. So black could play something like queen c7. I think this might have been best objectively, but after rook takes a1, it's a really difficult position for black. Um, even if they manage to trade queens, like with queen c4, for example, um, I think white's bishops are just going to be way too strong in the end game. Though uh, maybe this was objectively the best way to go, but yeah, overall, really difficult for black. Instead, black played b5, uh, which I definitely understand, trying to muddy the waters. If queen takes b5, there's bishop d4, um, although the bishop is still pinned, so I thought white was doing well. Um, but I realized that the simplest thing for me here was just to play queen takes a7, because I keep an eye on the d4 square, so I don't let the bishop escape. The queen, of course, is still under attack. The bishop on a1 is still under attack, and yeah, black just has no defense. Um, if queen b4, then black would have rook c4. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, not this one, because I have rook takes d8 and uh, I'm winning um, material, but actually bishop c3, this is the problem. And uh, black black is able to get out without losing material. Um, but queen takes a7, black has no escape. And uh, yeah, if queen c7, for, exam uh, for example, then I would just take and take on a1 with a winning endgame. Uh, yeah, so the game finished after rook c4. I took on d8, rook takes d8, and uh, the back rank is covered. The bishop on f4 is under attack. Uh, so I could just play g3 here, but I decided to throw in queen takes e7 just to grab another pawn, hitting the rook on d8 with uh, tempo. And then, of course, it's much easier now to break through now that I've snagged this pawn. I can play e6 in any position and, and break things open. Um, so black played rook dc8 with uh, mate threat, and of course bishop is still hanging, but white covers both with g3. And uh, that was game over. My opponent resigned here as just there's no more counterplay. So yeah, um, not a perfect game by, <laughs> by any stretch, but overall I, I was quite happy with how I um, played this one because I felt like you know the opening was definitely a struggle. I was not doing well out of the opening, um, but I had to kind of calculate and, and really figure out a lot of lines for myself. And uh, for the most part, my calculations in this game I thought were fairly accurate. I definitely missed and, and mis-evaluated some ideas, but I feel like I also uh, avoided some lines correctly. And um, yeah, even though black had a defense um, to this e5 move, uh, it seemed very, very difficult uh, to find. <laughs> you know, both me and my opponent spent a lot of time thinking about this position, and neither of us uh, considered uh, rook, uh, rook c8 and knight c4. Maybe we're both just bad calculators and <laughs> we need to improve. Um, but yeah, I feel like, well, you're rarely going to see everything that the engine sees in a game, but I felt like I saw enough to um, uh, at least win this one. So now I'm on four and a half out of six, uh, doing pretty well so far. Gonna have uh, three very tough games to finish the event, but um, yeah, looking forward to some good fights. Thanks again for tuning in, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next videos. Take care.